Solving a system of nonlinear equations is very similar to solving a system of linear equations. So if you think back to when we solved systems with lines, what we were looking for is when lines were intersecting. Okay? And with lines, we really only had a couple of options. Our lines either crossed at one spot, they were parallel so they crossed at no spots, or they were the same line so they crossed at an infinite number of spots. When we're dealing with nonlinear systems, basically what I mean by that is conic sections, we're going to have a different set of possible intersections. And so I'm going to take a couple looks at different shapes and let's just figure out how many times they could intersect. Okay, so my first example is going to be a parabola and a line. Okay, and probably the easiest one to see is that they could intersect twice. If you have a parabola, the line crosses through both sides, it could cross twice. Same logic, it could also cross zero times if the line is below the parabola. Okay, and these are just one example. There could be obviously hundreds of different scenarios for two answers or zero answers. But there's also one other way that this could work, and that is if the line just touched at one point. So if we had the parabola and it just, say, went at one point, this is called point of tangency. Basically, a line that just touches at one point is a line that's tangent. So for a parabola and a line, we could actually have these two things intersect either zero, one, or two times. Okay. Another example is a parabola and a circle. So again, let's just draw out some figures and see how many times these can intersect. Easiest one to see is zero times. You have a circle, you have a parabola, they're completely different. No intersections. You could also, by the same logic that we did before, have a circle that is tangent to the parabola. That's going to be one intersection could have a parabola and a circle that crosses at two points. Or you could have a parabola and say a circle that is, actually let's make this parabola a little bit smaller so you can see this one a little bit better. Have your parabola and your circle comes in and touches just a point of tangency on one side. Okay, so that would be three points. Or lastly, you have your parabola and your circle, my circle in that case looks a little bit more like an ellipse, but hopefully you got the idea. It crosses both sides in two spots. So with a circle and a parabola, we have many different options of how many solutions we could have. We could have zero, one, two, three, or four. Okay. So instead of just with lines where we just have the answer, the only possibility is infinite, zero, or one, we're going to have different options depending on the shapes. And how we solve nonlinear systems is going to be almost identical to how we solved linear. We have two main tools, substitution and elimination. Okay? And instead of dealing with just x and y, we're now going to be dealing with x squared and y squared and things like that, but it really doesn't make a difference. We still can just use elimination and substitution to solve them.